Mr. Muslim. Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon to you. Today I want to talk about a new video by Joshua Fernstein. Welcome to the video! Okay, just to clarify, I'm not racist against Americans. You know, I have many American friends. I don't mind Christians. I used to be one. You released your atheist video and this is what you said. Evolution is not a science, never has and never will be. Why? Because it cannot fit within the parameters and parentheses of science for one simple reason. It was never observed. Now today you released a video uh, called Dear Mr. Muslim. That my Muslim friends are some of the most kind, caring, compassionate, incredible individuals I have ever met. And to be quite honest with you, and sadly so, well, your propensity towards prayer and dedication to your religion puts most Christians to shame. It's really good that you've recognized this and, and you've experienced this yourself. I'm sure many other people throughout the world have witnessed and experienced the manners and the hospitality of the Muslims. How is it that Islam says that Jesus Christ is a prophet? Yes, we do. But so does the Bible. Now, there's many places in the New Testament where Jesus is described as a prophet of God. When I look at the words of Jesus Christ, well, they seem to well, contradict exactly what Islam says. Where's the contradiction? Because Jesus is described as a prophet in the Bible. You see, Islam says that Jesus Christ was not the Son of God, that he was not the Savior of the world, that he was not the Messiah. Slow down. Now, these are big claims. Now, let's take point one. The first claim is that Muslims don't believe that he's the Son of God. Now, what do you mean by the Son of God? If you look at the Old Testament, we can see that Judaism has used the, the term Son of God in many different ways throughout time. It's often used to describe a pious person, someone who is close to Allah, someone who is close to God. Metaphorically to describe it as the Son of God, fine. But we're talking physically. We don't believe that Jesus is a son of God because the Quran says he begets not, nor was he begotten, and there's nothing like him. So God does not beget children. The second point you claim is that Muslims don't believe Jesus is the savior of the world. Again, this is incorrect. Where are you getting your information from, man? The Muslims believe Jesus is the saviour of the world of his time. He was the prophet who was sent to the children of Israel. Now the final claim that he gave us was that Muslims don't believe Jesus is the Messiah. Where did you get your information? You've obviously never read the Quran before. Oh please, Joshua, please. Read the Quran for yourself. For he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me. As a Muslim, we have no problem. It doesn't contradict Islam. Jesus is the way. It's the way we follow. Jesus is the truth. He will believe he was truthful. He's the life. We have to follow him in this life. No one can get to him. No one can get to God except for believing in him. No problem. It's your interpretation that now, from somehow from this verse, you're, you're interpreting that Jesus is claiming divinity. When he looks at his disciples, he makes claims of divinity such as, If you have seen the me, you have seen the Father. For I and the Father are one. From a Muslim perspective, this is fine. If you look at Jesus, if you look at Musa, Moses, Abraham, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them all, they're all walking revelations. So if you have seen them, you have seen what God has revealed. So I and the Father are one. What's wrong with this? Muslims are one. Christians are one. All the prophets were one in conveying the message, the one meaning, the one goal. How are you interpreting this to, to say that Jesus is claiming that he is one with God? He is everything in the middle. He is God. Where is your evidence? Your evidence is in the Bible. Now the same way in your atheist video, you refuse to accept evolution as a fact on the basis that it's not been observed, then I also will present this to you. How can you accept the Bible as a holy book when it has not been observed? We don't know where it came from. We don't have any chains of narration and where the Bible came from. 
Luke says, since many have written books about Jesus, which was handed down through the times, Luke also felt the need to write a book. He thought it was good for him to write a book since he studied it. What is this? Luke doesn't claim that he received inspiration or revelation. He's claiming that he wrote it from himself. Okay? So now, why do you take the words of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and the words of the New Testament as Gospel truth? That was a joke.